Hi guys, in this video I'll be speaking about transitioning from a network engineer to a network security engineer and why would you want to do it and how do you actually achieve this. So make sure you watch this video till the very end. First things first guys, do hit the subscribe button and the like button and share this video if you like it as well and comment at the end of the video if you agree with the points that I'm making. Let's let's interact via the comment section in this video. So I thought of making a video about transitioning from a network engineer to a network security engineer because that's something that I did myself. But before we understand what this transitioning journey will look like, let's know the fundamental difference between a network engineer and a network security engineer. A network engineer is someone that's responsible for maintaining, running, troubleshooting and administering the network. So a network engineer is someone that will perform routing, switching configurations, implement VLANs, set up the wireless network for an organization, pretty much ensure the upkeep and running of a network as a whole. Whereas a network security engineer on the other hand does have to do the same things that a network engineer does. but at the same time also make sure that the network is very secure and this comes with having good security principles and standards that you set within the network which includes usage of devices such as firewalls you can use palo alto firewalls cisco firewalls fortnet firewalls etc so the main difference obviously comes down to the word security but a network security engineer ensures that the network is running but in a more secure fashion now I thought I'd break this video down into two parts and that is the why and the how. So the first thing or the first part is why you should be a network security engineer. Security is the need of the hour. In the last year itself in Australia, you had so many big organizations that were hacked, which included Medibank, Optus, Latitude Finance, and probably many more. This just shows you that hackers or attackers are targeting bigger or smaller organizations as well to get as much as data as they can and probably sell it or get money from these organizations. Due to this, most companies are trying to implement robust security standards so that none of this data is stolen and they don't have to be on the receiving end of such breaches or hacks. And obviously, who saves the day when it comes to incidents like these? It's security professionals and it's the duty of a network security engineer to ensure that at a network level, everything is secure. The second reason is that there are so many jobs in the job market for a network security engineer. If you just go to seek.com or even LinkedIn, these are um, websites mainly focusing to, uh, at the job market in Australia. You'll see there are so many open jobs for network security engineers, but I'm sure that in your country as well, or wherever you're watching this video from, there will be plenty of network security engineer roles. And that's a huge bonus. It just tells you that the market is hot for this profession. And the third reason is that there's a lot of responsibility with when it comes to being a network security engineer and this sense of responsibility or this added responsibility is directly proportional to the compensation that you get as well. So as a network security engineer, your salaries tend to be higher too. So let's say if you're earning um, $100,000 as a network engineer, the moment you transition to a network security engineer, you can easily bump your salary by another 30 grand. So you can go from a hundred to a $130,000 per year package. So these are some of the reasons as to why you should be, or you should choose to be, or even consider being a network security engineer. Now let's come to the main part. And that is how you be a network security engineer. Now, this is more of how I achieved this transition. And I thought, you know, maybe I can tell you guys that this is how I did it. So you can use similar points to successfully complete your journey as well between these two fields. The first thing is that you need to make sure that you are a good network engineer first. So when I say you need to be a good network engineer first is you need to have a fundamental understanding of the network at a very good level. Make sure you've worked for at least two or three years 
get good routing projects in perform a, a decent number of switching projects uh, deploy wireless solutions uh, troubleshoot uh, issues within the network pretty much get a solid understanding of what a network engineer does or what being a network engineer is in the first place because if you cannot be a good network engineer the chances of you being a good network security engineer are also very lesser i would say because it's added responsibility it's not just keeping the network up and running but it's also making sure that it's secure and meets the necessary security standards so that's the first point the moment you realize you're a good network engineer and you've got good command over this field definitely take consider about giving it that next um jump which is focus on being a network security engineer if you like it the second point as to how you can achieve this is practice in a home lab environment or on a network simulator when i was transitioning i used evng and i've said this in most of my videos because it's one of my favorite network simulation tools that's evng and use vendor specific firewall images like i used to use palo alto uh, firewall images because Palo Alto is one of the leaders when it comes to uh, network security. It's not because I'm wearing their t-shirt, but it's also because I genuinely mean it. And uh, you can check it out as well. Uh, but Palo Alto, you can use uh, build labs using Palo Alto devices, uh, Fortinet devices, checkpoint, whatever. Just incorporate all of this in home lab setups or your um, virtual um, simulators and practice as much as you can troubleshoot issues with the right security policies uh, when it comes to palo alto perform projects like uh, uh, ssl decryption url filtering do all of this in your home lab setup this will give you a good understanding of what it is like to be a network security engineer the third point is that get a couple of network security certifications in now when i was transitioning I got the PCNSA, which is the Palo Alto Certified Network Security Administrator, which focuses a lot on uh, firewalls, zones, interfaces, uh, security policies, SSL decryption, a QoS on firewalls, pretty much networking and secure networking from a Palo Alto device perspective. How to use Panorama, how to onboard firewalls into Panorama. Panorama is basically a central um, management platform for most of these firewalls. And I'm thinking of making a video on how I cleared the PC NSA and what are the different steps I took. So comment if you would like me to make a separate video on that as well. So as I said, get a couple of good network security certifications. You can get the Fortinet certifications as well. They have a good range of certifications called the NSC certifications, or you can also get the Cisco uh, CCNA security or the CCNP security, completely your choice. I wouldn't recommend getting a professional level certification though. Try and get the more uh, associate level security certification. And then once you start working, you can build that practical experience and then target those professional level certifications. And the final point is make changes to your resume because when I was uh, transitioning, my resume was mainly or mainly implied that I was a network engineer and the keywords that I was using within my resume also showed that, you know, we're focused more on network engineering. So tweak your resume, add more keywords that incorporate um, security uh, implementations or projects in them uh, use the security keyword a lot use um, uh, keywords such as uh, access policies or um, firewalls or stuff like that you know so that your resume gets picked when you apply for these network security roles so yeah these 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 were pretty much the four points i think there were four points as to how you can transition into a network security engineer role so if this is something you like and this is something you want to discuss more with me, you can get in touch with me on LinkedIn and drop me a message there and uh, let's let's have a chat, let's speak and um, I will try my best if I can provide any advice on how to complete this transition uh, from a network engineer to a network security engineer. And if you feel I've missed any points, do mention it in the comment section and um, yep, if uh, as, as I said at the beginning as well, if you like the video, do subscribe to the channel hit the like button, comment what your views are, and I'll see you guys in the next video.